you must have heard a saying that health issues can happen to anyone no matter who you are hmm. let me share with you my journey on how i discovered managed and reversed pcos symptoms So she mentioned PCOS. PCOS simply means polycystic ovary or ovarian syndrome. Now, it's a problem that affects the hormones during reproductive years. It's a syndrome because it affects several systems of our bodies. So I found out a few months after I got married, I discovered that I had not seen my period for four months. And when I did a PT test, it was negative. And so another thing I noticed again was that I wasn't sleeping well, I had difficulty sleeping. And e even though I desired to gain weight, I started having upper body weight and my sugar level was elevated. As she mentioned, irregular periods are one of the symptoms of PCOS. For some women of reproductive age, you might discover that you have not seen your periods ever, or you were once seeing your period and then suddenly you weren't seeing your period again. For some people, the, the interval between the last time they saw their period and then the next one is like more than 35 days, really elongated. For some people in a year, you've not seen it, up to five years. And I know that, you know, as a woman, we understand the stress of periods and when you have not seen your period once in a while, you're like, dear Lord, I know I've not had any sex. And since you decided to take away my periods, I'm just gonna take holes, right? Holiday time. However, this is not, something to just relax about. I would encourage you to see a gynecologist or just see a doctor to get it checked out because early diagnosis and treatment is key to managing whatever complications that could want to arise in the future. Now, another symptom of PCOS is that on ultrasound examination, it might discover that the ovary contains or has some small fluid filled sacs on the outer border. These fluid filled sacs contain immature eggs follicles these follicles will not even they will not even agree to release the egg is immature but to release it is a lot of wala you know so this is another thing that could um, show that someone has pcos the third would be high androgen levels if you are examined and found to have two or more of these classes of symptoms irregular periods cyst field ovaries or high androgen levels, then we might just be headed towards the diagnosis of PCOS. So when I was diagnosed with PCOS, I was like, it was a shocker for me. I was like, where did this come from? Like, is it for my village people? What did I do to warrant this? Why, like, why me? It was, it was really, really a down moment for me at that point. Truth is, the causes are unknown. I realize how that sounds, but that's the fact. They are unknown. However, we have risk factors that could contribute to us having PCOS. The first is insulin resistance. So if one has had, a, or you have a family history of diabetes, or in the past you've had cases of, with insulin resistance, insulin is the hormone responsible for mopping up sugar from the blood and helping the tissues absorb blood sugar. Now, when your body is resisting insulin, that could lead to accumulation of sugar in the body and can complicate, lead to complications that lead to PCOS. Second risk factor could be some type of inflammation. There are some people that have had low grade inflammation with their cells in the past. Some studies have also shown that it could be hereditary. High androgen levels finally have been found to contribute towards PCOS. If your androgen levels are high, of course it can affect maturation of eggs and even affect ovulation generally. And when this happens, you know, um, fertility is equally affected acne can ensue because of the high levels also hirsutism which is male pattern excessive male pattern hair distribution can also be part of the symptoms one might experience just as she highlighted elevated blood sugar is one of the complications that could arise from pcos and if not well managed it can tip into diabetes mellitus in the event one gets pregnant there could also be gestational diabetes 
or even hypertension in pregnancy. Another common complication of PCOS is infertility. Because of course, when the androgen levels are high, it affects maturation of the eggs, also affects um, ovulation generally. And when there's no ovulation, of course, conception cannot occur. For women who get pregnant, another complication that may arise would be miscarriages. It's not uncommon to have miscarriages. Now, this doesn't mean that it's associated with every um, person who has PCOS, no. That's why we encourage you to please reach out to your doctor. PCOS can also affect sleep patterns, just as she said. Sleep apnea is a condition that is associated with PCOS too, where someone is sleeping and suddenly you, you feel you're not breathing well, and this can also affect your sleep pattern and cause insomnia. You know, there's just a lot of complications directly and indirectly associated with PCOS. But I think I'm going to crown it all with something she mentioned about upper body weight. Now with PCOS, there's something we call metabolic syndrome. This metabolic syndrome, as I said in the beginning, syndrome means you know different things coming together to cause one thing. Now it's not just one thing. It affects the blood sugar, it can affect the blood pressure, it can affect digestion, it can affect um, body weight, and that's why you notice that some persons who have PCOS have excessive body weight. Now, this weight gain is not just about what they eat. Some people just say, ah, stop eating, ah, you are food, eh? you too like food. I like, you know they talk, just small breeze like this, you have added weight. All those remarks could be insensitive, especially when someone who is uh, managing PCOS knows that it's not about what they eat. So this is hormonal and these hormones um, come together to form this metabolic syndrome, which also contributes to weight gain. And most times it affects the upper body. Weight gain? Hmm. It's so funny how I really desire to add weight, but this time around I wasn't gaining weight proportionally, like I was having higher body weight instead and it actually affected me and when i and my husband have been trying and have been unable to conceive um it also affected me mentally and i started getting depressed worst of all was that i got bullied online you know saying things like i control my husband or i beat my husband and my husband cannot father a child because you know he's a woman and i remember coming back from a hsg test which is a test that checks if your fallopian tubes were blocked and that is one painful test that i don't even pray for my enemy to go through coming back with such pain and coming online to see such messages said about me and my husband all this because i haven't conceived yet it was really really heartbreaking and it was it was a terrible moment for me it was it was it was indescribable it was really really devastating the mental health aspect of pcos and even women's health issues generally is not talked about enough you see the anxiety the depression the sleep disorders the eating disorders associated it's just a whole lot and it's a combination of both you know, the chemical interplay, courtesy of the hormones that are imbalanced, when there are hormones going north, when they should go south, that's enough to alter one's mood and cause series of, you know, emotional upheaval. But then there's also that aspect that society plays. And society is you and I. I, I believe that a lot of life's problems will be solved if we learn to be more sensitive to each other, learn to be more accommodating, learn to be more thoughtful in our words, in our actions. I always tell people, you don't need to know all of a person's problems to be kind to them. You don't need to know he or she have been going through this. Oh, if I had known, I wouldn't have said. If I had known, I wouldn't have done. No, just be kind. Because most times when persons or women who have PCOS are going through this, they need emotional support from everyone around them. They need that strength for the days when they feel, oh, I can't even continue. It's not enough for you to just sit back when you have these symptoms and feel it will go away. 
if you notice you're having any of these mental health challenges, please reach out to a mental health professional, someone who is well trained to help you through this journey. I got a lot of support from my husband and my friends. And then my husband introduced me to his senior colleague, who is a gynecologist, that helped me through with the proper management plan, which included prescription and as well as um, exercise pattern, like encouraged me to exercise more. And also recommended that I talk to a dietitian or a nutritionist, which I did. They were able to help me with a proper meal plan that helped me in this journey and look at me now i have lost upper body weight my sugar levels are back to normal i am happy my periods are regular and i feel good right now you see i'm entertaining you guys so you could feel that joy right really palpable and that could be you you first need to understand that pcos can be managed don't believe any lies you've heard anywhere if you notice any symptoms that could mimic pcos please do well to reach out to your doctor immediately because early management can help reduce any complications you can have in the future. Now, when you come to the doctor, it's a combination of things. We find out the symptoms that are most glaring and manage those symptoms. And as we're managing it, we're also managing other areas of the PCOS. It includes lifestyle management, like your weight loss, because weight gain exacerbates or even worsens some of these symptoms and even could lead to complications. So we want to make sure that your weight is under control Everybody has their ideal body weight. So it doesn't mean you have to be very tiny, your ideal body weight. Then there is the dietary aspect. What are you eating? It also greatly contributes to um, both your hormones and the weight. There's also some persons who might be commenced on drugs. So there's the um, therapy part. There's a chemotherapy part where you take medications. There are medications even including breath control that are just there to help balance your hormones and help your periods become regular. So your periods can become regular. Your weight can be managed. Those complications can be reversed. You know, all you have to do is talk to a medical professional. Not everyone who touts cures and everything on Instagram, social media is a professional. Don't be a victim of quacks please reach out to a professional medical doctor or gynecologist in association with a dietitian or nutritionist today. Wishing you all the best. Now that you understand or you know my story and you also understand PCOS from the doctor's perspective, Dr. Chama is, you know, amazing. I think we should invite a dietitian or a nutritionist. Yes. Because nutrition is really, really vital when it comes to managing and reversing PCOS. True. And I mean, you're talking to the right person because, uh, ah, you know, my husband is a nutritionist and all uh, I have to do is like to type, you know, pam, 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 pam. Hello. <laughs> what are we now waiting for? See you in the next episode. Bye.